Sure. We'll run the numbers for album number four. Okay, so this is going to be Sparks. Um, kimono My House by Sparks. And this is that album, how we say kimono my house? Like how do we? Yeah, break like come it? over to my house. Kimono, kimono my, my house, house. John. Yeah, kimono my so. house. All, all one word, not like kimono <laughs> my house or kimono my house. Kimono yeah. my house. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this comes in on best ever albums at two, number two eighteen in the nineteen seventies, number sixteen in nineteen seventy four, number nine hundred and seventy nine of all time. Um. It is. Uh, Sparks' highest-ranked album on Best Ever Albums, and in Rolling Stone, it's a it's 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 low, but it's there, number four seventy-six in Rolling Stone's top five hundred list. All right, um, so I and I think Josh... I go, I think I go for. Do I go first? Go first, Matt. That's fine. Yeah. Matt wants to jump this... in. <laughs> I don't know if I want to jump in. That's the thing. I'll, I'll go first. Um, so uh, this album's uh, a little all over the place. And yeah. this album is falls certainly mostly of, of all the albums we're covering this week certainly falls the most in the category of I need to listen to this more. It's one listen is a hard, yeah, is, is, is hard to kind of come up with a cogent take on. Um, I think overall I liked it. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, um, and uh, it's uh, they're 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 picking up on a lot of different genres they're picking up on a lot of different sounds and kind of throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks uh my first impression with the first track this town ain't big enough for the both of us uh was a queen-esque sound this is kind of like a big dramatic sounding theatrical uh type mm -hmm. of, of music mm -hmm. um a little crazy and frantic at times upbeat um kind of lots of lots of sounds very full in your face um and certainly right at the back queen was um, something that came to uh, my mind. Uh, Amateur Hour, the second track, uh, again, a very fa like a fast paced, full song. Uh, it's jumping from one thing to another. And I don't know if this is going to make a whole lot of sense to our, our listeners, but it's certainly going to make sense to John. I know Dude, exactly I'm, what bands you're going to say. Uh, this is Fox and Shazam. I was going to say, I was going to bring that up in my own. I was going to say, I know where Foxy Shazam came from. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so was, crazy you said that because yep. I was like, yep. It's mm -hmm. true. It's like, so Foxy Shazam is a bit, John, this is the side story. John and I were like hanging out one time and we just decided, John, you were going through like all these different like, like on-demand yes, videos that yes. you were so like, what's this band? Never heard of them. And so we watched and Foxy Shazam yeah. came up with a song that was awesome. John, I, we, and like halfway through, it was really all over the place and chaotic. Dangerous Man is the name of the song. Dangerous Man. Yeah. Yep. And halfway through, I think one of us turned to the other and said, I think I kind of like this. And the other one was like, yeah, me too. And it was like this weird thing because you, it took you a while to kind of put your finger on what was going on. And that's, this is kind of what re I was reminded of. Um, so all the uh, way down to that, like falsetto voice. Mm -hmm. That's like, or you yeah. Know, orchestra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like chaotic. And it's like very fast drumming, and da -da 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 -da, you know, and just yeah. kind of stuff, piano parts. It's a very, you know, big thing that's going on. So um, part of this, I was getting a little, I was certainly getting some T-Rex here and glam rock. I was getting my chemical romance type stuff too, with some of this, again, very mm -hmm. theatrical, very dramatic yep. type sounds. Um, but, uh, but everything's kind of different. The vocals are very interesting. The, the, the last track equator, um, ends with this, this falsetto kind of like almost acapella type sound. And, uh, it's very creepy kind of sounding, but also very unique and distinct and, and, and cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of this is up, uh, you know, upbeat. It's, it's, it, it, it's, you're not going to fall asleep to this album. This is going to, you know, <laughs> it's going to throw some stuff at you. That's going to yeah. keep you awake. Um, you know, lots of fast paced drumming and, um, some stuff I, I was like, like, thank God it's not Christmas. I, it, you know, some songs <laughs> I was confused. I'm like, I'm not sure if I like this. The chorus signed, it sounded kind of cool, but it's just um, this 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 album demands more listening to really have something uh, you know uh, more definitive to say about it. Um, so I, I I'm starting to, I'm falling a little on the side that I liked it, and uh, just because it's unique and it's got elements yeah. that you like, um, you know, those other bands like. Queen, Foxy, Shazam, uh, T Rex, uh, My Chemical Ramats. I do. I like a number of things that those bands do. Um, you know, some of this is a little bit proggy as well, so I would throw that as a descriptor in here. So I kind of like that. But uh, yeah, needs needs more listening though, for sure, to 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 get a grasp on it. Okay. Okay. So, should I go, John, or do you want to go? You go. I'll I'll end it up. Okay. So. I know about this band because Edgar Wright did a documentary about them earlier this year called Sparks. And I had 
no idea who this band was before that documentary but the documentary is really good i highly recommend it and it really gives you appreciation for this band um and this album is is you know a highlight of their work however ron and russell um who are the who are sparks they they've been around since they started making music since the late 60s right and they actually went to england and became a glam rock band so you can that's how they started as a glam rock band before they mm-hmm. transitioned into the sound and they're continuing to make albums today hmm. and they put out albums like you know every few years for through the through the 70s and 80s and into the 90s and then it kind of their um output slowed a little bit but I mean, they had an album last year, and I think they are now getting, which is uh, a reappraisal, which I think is why Edgar Wright made the band too, and they're this influential band that that um that has kind of this underground cult following and is now getting reappreciated. So that's how I know about them. I didn't know any of their music before this, mm-hmm. and um and the the documentary is really good because it like well it picks all their best songs right and like you get to hear like all the best cuts and clips and i think this town ain't big enough for the both of us is probably one of the standout tracks on this album and and that's in the doc and so i came in listening to this album knowing about the documentary and i was a little unfortunately it was a little kind of like I had a mixed reaction. It seemed I was expecting more. I think my expectations were higher than mm. what it gave me. And I can, I certainly noted how it's very queen like, but it's almost before queen. Cause this album came out in 74. And so I think they were maybe around the same time queen started or contemporaries of them. So they, well, they would have been not, contemporaries because queen's first album was 72. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, around the at least around the same time, and I think they're just they incorporated the electronic music, also kind of earlier than a lot of people, is my impression based mm-hmm. on listening to this album. So, uh, I heard a lot of like electro dance pop in this. Um, their song structure is Russell singing very high pitched, <laughs> and and uh, having kind of a repeating sound dance sound behind them in a lot of the songs and they have a very theatrical sound too and their lyrics are are funny often you know thank god it's not christmas is a is a funny title for a song and i feel like you know hasta manana mansoor is obviously a a play uh, intentionally like mixing up different you know languages together for a title and so I want to hear some of their other albums, especially later on. I think they are a band also that always did their own thing since it's just the two of them. They they changed from album to album, maybe not in the way that Wire did, but they were not set to stay in one type of sound. Um, I think they evolved over time and, and kept that electronic uh, underbelly, but but um, maybe evolved with, you know, through the eighties and things like that. So this is a, this is a fun album. It's, it got a little on my nerves at times because it, it didn't seem like the songs had enough substance to them. It was like cotton candy type of type of music. There was no, and I'm not necessarily looking for like deep lyrics or anything, but there wasn't enough, like verses almost in in some Mm. of these songs it was like the same thing repeating over and over again and that can only take me so far um, through a whole album but i think i like their intention behind this i feel like they have good um instincts and and that they're doing stuff that wasn't necessarily done i kind of almost equate them with the 10 cc album um, yeah. I was looking for uh, comparisons. So stole one for me too. That's another <laughs> one I was going to go with. And um, which I think I like that album more. It was it was like more crazy. It was like dialed up sparks almost or something. And but I I see the potential here, and I and I want to see what those other albums are. And maybe if I listen to this again, because I didn't really ever listen to the music after I saw the documentary, then I get something more out of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I had no idea what to expect from this because I, I actually didn't really have any knowledge of Sparks, you know, Kimono. I actually didn't even recognize it as an album 
that had as much of a, you know, uh, critic following. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was really interested to do this because I was like, Ooh, okay, this is the rare album where I Mm -hmm. have like no context to this. And I mean, immediately I'm listening to it and the first track and I'm like, well, this is, this is like sheer heart attack queen, which, Mm -hmm. you know, killer queen. I don't know if you know that song, killer queen, like that type of song, like the vamped up, you know, coked up sort of like sound where it's frantic almost a little bit you know with you know the ornateness kind of and um yeah and sheer heart attack i looked it was like the same year i was like okay wow okay talk about an exact context Hmm, yeah and then yeah as the album went on i remember thinking to myself jesus who does this sound like and i was like foxy suzanne and then so when matt said (laughs) that i was like well he clearly got there too and then i started immediately you know saying this is also similar in the lack of seriousness to like 10 CC. So, I mean, you guys beat me to all of the frame of rap. Another, <laughs> another, if I want to think about it, keep going and doing reference a Palooza here. Another band that I'll say there's some similarities with is the band squeeze, um, who we're not going to talk about a little bit. They have a little bit of that same sound that squeeze has of writing these pop songs that are kind of slice of life, but could be absurdist too. Like, you, I mean, I think people know Squeeze for like tempted, but that's yeah. not really their best like term. I think it's more like cool for cats, like type Squeeze that I would describe it for, for those that even know what the hell I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, it's like the thing that defines this album to me is like the frantic energy. It's mm-hmm. uh, just, it's just banging around. It's, it's genreless in a way with that being said, it's firmly planted in pop music as well. So it's pop music, but it's pop music coming from a bunch of different directions. Um, Electronic, as mentioned by my colleagues, for sure. Dance pop, for sure. Glam elements, for sure. Even sort of like the performative elements of like what a Rocky Horror Picture Show type song Mm, sounds like is there. Uh, Matt mentioned My Chemical Romance that I hadn't thought about as well, but that's another good compare. Basically anybody who's doing sort of a showman-like rock and roll, you know, that, that builds to a crescendo. Makeup and, and a, costumes. and I feel, yeah. Well, the, I, I, the cover of the album made me laugh too. And like <laughs> I'm like, what is going on with this cover? And then as I'm reading like a review of it, someone described it as, Two women dressed in kimonos that look like they just effed a woman or a man to death. And I was like, <laughs> you know, that actually is somewhat, you know, descriptive of what it, I don't know if I saw that or agree with that. But I looked at it more as like one person's looking at someone who's dead and the other person's looking at someone who they're bored by them, kind of. And it's like, mm. what is going on with these two women on this, you know, kimono? Even what is kimono in my house? even me does it mean come on over to my house or does it just mean something random so because they lean into it right with women in kimonos so it's like a little yeah. on that nail their so, their other covers are really good too um mm-hmm. if you if you take a look well there's like that pop art like element to yeah. them you know that you can definitely feel in their songs their songs are kind of about nothing <laughs> kind of like yeah. the 10cc songs were it's like yep. what exactly am i picking up here i kept waiting to see turns of phrase and stuff but it just was more kind of like goofy it's kind of like you know what that glam rock is when you hear a song like wig wham bam or something and you're like you know what what's this song even about you know like um and yeah or like fox on the run you know stuff like songs like that where you're like okay you know what what's that all about but um i would say i like this album it's just it's a it's a hard album to kind of um process in some Mm -hmm. ways because i don't even know if it's designed to be thought of (laughs) deeply you know i think it's It's art john it's It's performance art art, and then you move on and that's probably why they had like you know you said in the 20s right of albums each one of them is probably their own individual piece of art and i think people who Mm -hmm. sit and probably over process it are exactly the people that sparks wasn't really making music for you know they kind of want you to interpret it in in your own way, but it's yeah. a, certainly a different type of avant-gardeism than like a Brian Eno who would write, you know, who you could tell you're, he's, he wants you to dig into it, you know, yeah, and, and that's experience true. it. Right. Whereas I don't think that's necessarily what this is designed to do. It's designed to be out there and evoke a certain feeling in you. And then you move on from it. So. It's almost yeah. like a joke sometimes with some of this stuff, like with this and with 10 CC, it's just like, let's just mess with people, <laughs> you know, like these are like the class clowns that are creative and they're just going to be like, why but not do this? You know, 10 CC kind of has like, you mentioned that they're like ween, which is a perfect description. And it's, I feel like they're more 
like in that nerd rock genre, you know, where it's kind of like, let's just write clever sort of cute songs that are kind of like too cute by half kind of like, mm-hmm. this doesn't feel like this. This feels like more like performance art, you know, which I never yeah. felt like those other bands are like performance art. They're more, you know, in the, you know, too funny for your own good type, you know, they might be giants, you know, writing sort of like that type stuff. This feels more aligned with like a queen or avant-garde art yeah. rock type stuff than those other ones do to me. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I, I wouldn't discount like the, the dance ability to this too, or the intention to make music to dance to. I think that's, that's really here. And that follows kind of that glam, that glam sound as well, because a lot of those glam rock songs are, are very danceable. Yeah, anybody go ahead. go ahead i was gonna say check out foxy suzanne if you haven't too because yeah. if you if you like this you'll like foxy suzanne so yeah mm-hmm.